everybody, it's Christopher Naiman. Okay, let's get creative. It's time for a tutorial, a creative tutorial. All right, so I don't know why I waited forever to make these bowl bags, these bowls. See that? These are the rope bowls that people, you know, I remember watching um, the ladies on the PBS selling shows back in the late, I think it was the late uh, 90s, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, they were all making these bowls. And then towards the late middle of 2000, there was another program on showing the bowls being made with this rope. This is clothesline rope. It's very soft, right? So I had some of this in my stash I bought a long time ago. I bought a big, big, um, you know, I don't know, what do you call it, girls? Skein is, when you call it, the thing of yarn is that a skein a skein whatever you call it anyway I had a big bunch of it right so I was inspired by watching somebody on the sewing groups and I thought you know what I'm going to uh, I'm going to try it it's been forever since I even tried it so I went and I made this just by just by a thought right I watched some of the programs or the videos and I said okay let's do it so I followed no measurement I just did what I thought the base would be big enough and then I sewed around then I had enough left over to make like a coaster which I guess I could put in the bottom here for extra support if you're gonna put anything hot in here you know so that's that so I went out looking for more of this rope oh boy I could not believe oh boy look at that I missed that I missed that. Let's go back and sew that. And I'm going to show you today in the video how to prevent this from happening so you don't miss it. Anyway, I went out looking for some more of this rope and boy is it expensive now. Like anything else, it's very expensive. You know, we as sewers used to sew because it saved us money. And we sew because it's a hobby and it's a creativity. Now we sew to be creative and find cheaper ways of being creative, right? And when we're forced to be on a budget and to find something cheaper, we get really creative, right? Which leads me to what I did today, right here. This, when you buy a big um, package of this, this here, whoops, sorry about that. When you buy a big package of this, industrial rope you're actually going to get more bowls from this package because this rope is thicker let me show you this rope is thicker than the clothesline see how thin the clothesline is now here's what I went out and bought today I bought this today and this is what it says it is it says it is a heavy-duty diamond braid polypropylene rope and it's a quarter inch by 100 feet and this is what I'm going to be sewing today and it's soft this is soft it's not really hard and because it's soft you can use this under your sewing machine with no problem but what this I decided to make um, I decided to make bowls for candy now this is quite a big candy bowl but hey you know, maybe you do fill your bowl up a lot at home. Because I was thinking, what other ways could you make these things? You know, because I've seen everybody making, you know, big tote bags. I've seen everybody. I'm like, what about just a small candy bowl? You can even make it smaller than this. But this is, I thought this was a good size for when company comes, you have candy. And you can make, I think you make a couple of these out of one, one big, uh, I'm going to call this a bolt. Okay, I'm just going to call this a bolt. Um. You can get probably a couple of these out of this, maybe even three, I don't know. But we're going to make this today, and I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, there has been ton of video, a ton of videos out on YouTube of uh, people showing you how to make these rope bowls. But no one has shown you, from what I found, how to use the industrial rope. Now, a while back, I did a video on how to make coasters out of this rope. However, the rope that I bought was a lot thicker it was so much thicker and I don't suggest this because it was a mistake I made and I even suggested in my other one unless you have a really heavy heavy duty machine and my Janome Skyline S5 was able to take this on but 
I wouldn't get anything this thick. So I wouldn't do anything more than the quarter inch. And if you could find rope like this thinner, it's fine. But this um, per yard and width was actually less money than that clothesline I found. And I was at the big um, home improvement store when I was buying that. All right, so let's, let's, let's get some setup going here. All right, so I wound my bobbin. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this teal bobbin, this teal color thread. And today I'm using Guterman okay you can use any color you want I just decided and eh, maybe this teal will be good and I need to use up some of this thread that I haven't used so this is a perfect way to start using up some of your thread too because when this thread gets old you know this is still good don't get me wrong it's still good remember do the snap test if you want to test to see if your thread is still good when you pull it apart if it makes a loud snap the thread is still good and it's gonna be strong so let's see how loud this is that's loud so that's gonna still be good this is just standard construction thread so you wind a bob into that now, I found making these, the best needle to use for this one today is a size 18 leather needle. Okay, that's what I found, found will work good for this machine today. Okay, so let me get prepared here and we'll get started. All right. Okay, the other thing I wanted to tell you is like I always preach in all my other videos, make sure you have an extension table, flat surface around your sewing machine. It's very, very important. I talked about that many, many times in my videos and this is no exception. Okay, and the reason because is you need a flat surface to keep your circle that you start because if it warps then it's going to be, you'll really see a, a noticeable difference um, after you make your bowl. Okay, alright, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap a circle. I'm going to create a circle here. And when you go to make your rope bowl, you want the feed to come from the right hand side, which is what you're seeing right now. You want it to come from the right hand side. Okay. Now I'm going to lift this under here. I've got a zigzag. This is going to be a zigzag stitch, or you could do a straight stitch. Um, Perhaps you're better at doing a straight stitch. So let me switch this to a straight stitch because some of you might feel better to start out with a straight stitch. So let me switch my... There we go. And I like to stop the needle in a down position. And the stitch length is going to be 2.0. So let me lower this. And then sew. And you don't want to sew really fast and I'll tell you why. I found on this machine, for some reason, um, when I sew too fast, like in reverse or something, uh, it kind of does a little mess up. So I like to be sure that uh, I sew slow. Now, whatever machine that you're working on, just make sure that you have enough clearance for rope like this. So that was the first one. Okay, now let me get rid of these threads here. This isn't the first video of someone showing people how to do this. Other people have done this, so this is not an original from me. What is original from me is doing it with this construction thread, or I'm sorry, construction rope, which I have not seen anybody else do. All right, so now I'm going to switch back to a zigzag. Now you could do a plus here, but I'm going to zigzag around that. I'm just going to do the zigzag. So my stitch width is 5.0. My stitch, stitch length is 2.0. I'm going to bring that up, and I'm going to do a zigzag. Now, all you're going to do is keep doing this around. Okay. I'm going to come back here, do this around. I really want to secure this in the middle. This is the most tedious thing in the beginning is doing this. Now other people on the video and other videos may show you a better way of doing what I'm doing, but it just is just basically making sure it's pretty much tacked down in here. Okay? So, all right. Now, here is what I'm going to do. And I want you to pay close attention to this because this is going to help you. Like I showed you in my video earlier, how I had 
how I missed a spot and this is going to help prevent you from missing a spot. You see the slit of the foot? You want to make sure that when you're sewing, when you go to sew, the new rope that you're attaching and adding to has to be right in the center of that split because 5.0 is a wide enough stitch width to go across and you just have to make sure that you get enough on there. Now this is going to be still a little tight because we're getting started so I'm going to lift and this is good if you have a knee lifter on your machine. Knee lifter is really really a help and that's why I'm using this my old Janome. This is my old Janome 9000, MC9000. I love the knee lifter. Most of all my machines have knee lifters. Um, well, I shouldn't say most all of them. Half of my machines have knee lifters. And you will know how important it is to use a knee lifter when you're doing something like this. Now you see how I'm keeping that rope in the split of the foot? And that's going to prevent, that's going to prevent this from missing when you attach one side to the other. I like to stop on the right side before I turn. When this circle gets bigger, you won't have to keep stopping. You just keep circling like this. See, I'm circling now. All right, so now I can pretty much keep that rope right there in the center. All right, I'm going to go back because I was looking at my camera and I messed up. When you're a one-man operation, <laughs> you tend to look in different directions and you can mess up. All right. I just want to make sure you all can see. So this is the base that you're creating. Now, the base that I created on my other bowl was about four and a half inches wide. Now you see how much quicker this goes now once you get that circle, the base circle established? Now stop and check. Looks good. Isn't that pretty? It's a pretty color. Okay, looks good. I'm hitting everything. All right, so we're just going to keep going around until I've got, oh, probably about a four, four inch, four inch wide base. Four, four and a half inch wide base. So we're just going to keep going. I'll speed this video up until I get to where I'm going. Before I do, I want you to understand something. Do not watch the needle. Watch this right here, where the split of the foot is. If you watch the needle, you're going to miss. I did that a couple times myself, even though I am an experienced veteran sewer, I made a mess up. And you know, we, we, no matter how long you've been sewing, you're still going to do, you still can make a mistake. So you have to keep reminding yourself every time you sew. Also, a rope like this is very forgiving, very forgiving. So if you're a newbie, or it's been years since you've sewn, and you want to come back to sewing, this is going to be a great project to come back to. This is one of those gifts that if you're late to the party, which I am late to make in this video, and what I mean by that is, these have been around forever, and I just, I just decided to make a bowl yesterday, and I was like, wow. Why was I late to the party? Well, if you're late to the party, you know what? Before you go there, it takes an hour to make one of these, and you can fill it up with candy and bring it to the host of your party. Makes a beautiful gift. I'll make sure I got all that. Yeah, I knew I missed a little bit. I think I missed a little bit right here. Yep, I did, because I was watching my camera again. So let me just lock this off with my lock stitch. 
I have to trust my tripod that it's not going to move on me when I'm filming this for you all. And just keep my eyes on this. See how I separated that? Because I wasn't paying attention. So I'm going to do another lock stitch here. I love this machine because it does a lock stitch in place. There we go, I'm just going to catch up where I was before and continue. And then every so often stop and make sure you pull your rope. I keep the rope on the floor. Alright, let's see how wide this is right now. Oh, I went a little wider than I wanted to, but this is good. This is good. That's okay. All right, now how do we start curving it so the bowl comes up? We're going to lift it like this. I'm going to hold the right thread, or the right side of the rope, and I'm going to just lightly give it a little nudge towards the circle. you got to keep this circle lifted up. I think I'm going to increase my stitch width to 5.5 now. This is a 7 millimeter wide machine. And as you're curving it, it will start to form. Now I've got to be honest with you all, I've got the camera in front of me, so I'm trying to lean to the right side to see what I'm doing, so I hope I'm not making any mistakes, which I'm not, it's curving. See how it's starting to curve? See how nice that is? So now that it's starting to curve, you're going to see it forming, forming the walls of the bowl. Once you get into a rhythm, this goes really quickly. Like I said, you can make one of these bowls in about an hour or less. And they do become addicting. They are addicting. So, let's stop a second. See how it's curving now? You see how it's making that? Isn't that great? Now, right now, you could stop right now and make this a small candy bowl. This might be a good candy bowl. Let me go around one more time and then I'll stop. But this goes even faster than using clothesline again because it's a wider rope. The circumference is a lot larger. All right, let's see where I'm at here. Sorry about that. Let me check here. Yeah, it's a little over three. All right, so here's how we end it. There are many, many different ways of ending this. I'm just going to show you a quick and simple way. So I'm going to cut it. And because this is man-made material, it will melt. So I'm just going to hit it with a lighter. Until that melts. There we go. Perfect. You can paint this later on if you want, and you can even tuck it in. Let's see, I may, I may tuck it down. Normally, I just leave it on the outside, but in the commercial ones I saw, they leave it on the outside, and they, they sew it down really good like that. So let's see what I can do here. 
think I'm just going to tap it over just a bit. Huh? No. No, I didn't want to tap over. And I didn't want to get my finger stuck. So I'm going back and forth right there. All right. Let's pull it out. Let's see. Whoa, that looks nice. Let me back the camera up and I'll show you. Well, how nice is that? And, you know, you could take a little magic marker and color that end there and color the end here if you want. Or you can paint, you know, paint it with some paint. Looks really nice, doesn't it? And here's the upside down. Isn't that a nice bowl? And that's a nice size candy bowl. So, for Christmas gifts, you can put some tissue paper in here, put some candy, or just drop the candy in and put some cellophane with a bow on it, and then got a nice, nice Christmas gift, a nice candy bowl. Isn't that nice? Ah! Like I said, I don't know why I waited 20-some years to do this. Because that's how long, I mean, even longer than that. Let's see, 1995, 19, around 1995 is when I think I first saw this being shown on TV. 95 or 2000, something like that. Late 90s it was. So I'm not the first to do this. This is not my idea. But when I saw this rope and I was looking on, at videos on YouTube, no one used this rope. They weren't using this kind of rope. So I thought, well, I'll do it. I'll do it. And if somebody did, I haven't seen that video. But here you go. To all my fans who are subscribed, to my YouTube channel, please subscribe if you're not and you're watching this and make sure you like this video and comment below this video to tell me if you too have made um, these rope bowls or if you tried different color of rope and things like that. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope you make some. I really do. Okay, take care everybody and uh, have fun sewing. Oh, I wanted to show you how much I have left over. See that? There's probably enough here to do maybe three or four more. I'd say at least three more you can get out of this. So for this big thing with this size bowl, uh, probably about four, four candy bowls, or, or even you know, I would say about maybe three or four candy bowls. Okay, bonus, bonus, bonus tip. Now, if you're using um, the cotton thread or the cotton rope clothesline cotton rope. Some of it can be soft, right? And you'll want to stiffen this up a bit, make it a little firmer. Well, if you do freestanding lace, I talked about this in one of my other videos. And you're using a water-soluble fabric or the topper, the water-soluble, and I said, don't throw this out, save it. Put it in a bowl of warm water, stir it, let it dissolve, and then put it in the spray bottle. Okay, put it in the spray bottle, and then take this and spray it all around let it soak in a little bit spray the inside spray underneath after it starts to dry hit it again let it dry overnight and it, it really stiffens it up for you hardens up the bowl for you all right hope you enjoyed that tip